Darren Lee is a linebacker the Raiders just picked up, and he has some good qualities. Reading and diagnosing plays, shedding blocks, and being pretty decent in pass coverage are just some of the things that I see from Darren Lee that he could potentially bring to the Raiders. Now, by no means do I think he's a superstar player. He's not an elite linebacker. Truth be told, he might not even be on the roster when week one comes around. But the Raiders need depth. Yeah, I think Darren Lee can provide that. Now, obviously, Lee will have to fight to be on this roster. He will be competing with Javen White, Tanner Muse, and Divine Diablo. And honestly, Lee is probably the third guy right now behind Diablo and Muse because those two guys are actually drafted by the Raiders as opposed to Lee. He was kind of just picked up off the street. So Lee has to really have a great training camp to stay on this roster. But before we move on, I want to explain why I think Darren Lee kind of failed with the Jets. In 2016, his rookie year, he had a pretty good year. 2017, in my opinion, he had a really good year. But in 2018, the Jets switched from a 4-3 to a 3-4. In the beginning of the year, they had Lee at his natural position, which is inside linebacker, as you guys can see in the picture above. And then as the season went along, they actually converted him to an outside linebacker in a 3-4. And I don't think that's where he fits. I don't think Lee is a pass rushing defensive end slash outside linebacker. I think Darren Lee is a thumper. He's an inside linebacker. And that is the type of depth he'll be providing for the Raiders. The Raiders have Nick Kwiatkowski and an undrafted rookie in Max Richardson. And now they have Darren Lee as an inside linebacker. So they're providing depth. And I think that's such a big part of what this team needs. With that being said, let's jump into the film. In 2019, Darren Lee signed with the Chiefs and they put him at his natural position. In their 3-4 defense, he was an inside linebacker. He wasn't elite, he wasn't anything special, but he was a good football player. He was a player that you can win a Super Bowl with, and he didn't play a lot for the Chiefs. He only played in a couple of games uh, when they really needed that depth, but when he was on the field, he was making plays. And uh, I think Darren Lee is one of those type of guys who, if you put him in position, if a good defensive coach can get the best out of him, he reads plays well. There's a reason why he was the 20th overall pick. He knows what he's doing in that specific sense. You know, I couldn't selectively show you guys, you know, positive plays, right? I can just search for Darren Lee and just find all his tackles and all the plays he's made. But that wouldn't give you guys the real picture. If I showed you guys every single play in one or two games in order, at least you guys will get to see what type of player he is. This is the first play that Lee is actually in the game. I think this is actually the first play uh, for the defense. So let's jump forward and let's get into it. All right, guys, jumping into play two, uh, Steve Spagnuolo is going to actually change the front. They're going to run a 4-3, right? That's that's one of the coaches that runs the multiple front. You're going to see Darren Lee lined up as an outside linebacker. In this instance, he's lining up as the weak side linebacker. Uh, he's going to get up to the line of scrimmage and basically just contain. You know, in the beginning of the video, I, I said one of the things that he does well is he gets off of blocks. And this is just an example of that. Here he is, and he does a pretty good job shedding the block. Now, of course, he doesn't make the play, but that's okay, right? That's that's not what we're watching. We're, we're trying to look for certain things he does well. We're trying to see at what point does he come in for Gus Bradley to do something. That's what we're going to show in this video. All right, guys, jumping forward, this is the second drive. That last play was the last play he played for on the first drive. Uh, this is the second drive of the game. You're going to see Darren Lee lined up right here in the A gap, or maybe it's the B gap. I can't really tell, but uh, he's lined up right here, and basically the Chiefs are going to bring a blitz, something Steve Spagnuolo is known for is blitzing a ton. Um, and Darren Lee is actually going to drop back in coverage, and Darren Lee actually has the responsibility, and, and Watson reads this perfectly. He hits his hot route when the blitz comes right there and Darren Lee should have technically gotten there but that's such a hard play man right there because Deshaun Watson reads it perfectly um that's for him to go from the b gap here and drop back and try to get way to the left side of the field that's a that's hard that's very very tough um Watson reads it perfectly Watson the smart football player right he knows he knows all his reads he's not scared to to, to take that hit like you have a linebacker coming directly at you. He's not scared. He's not going to panic. He's going to make his read, and he's going to make the throw. Lee does not get there quick enough, but that's okay, right? These are the things you do as a defensive coach. Uh, you take your shots. You take your risks, and hopefully they'll pay off. And for the Chiefs, they did, right? 13th ranked defense in 2019. 
Hey guys, uh, I mentioned this earlier, Steve Spagnola changes his front up like an out of control amount. Uh, now they're switching back to a 3-4. And notice how Darren Lee is an inside linebacker in that 3-4. Again, just based off of what I've watched of him, I think his best fit is inside linebacker. Now obviously the Raiders will be playing a 4-3. Um, but again, Lee, in my opinion, is going to be the backup to Kwiatkowski. I, I think that's going to be his natural position. Now, maybe he plays a little bit of outside linebacker. Um, but here's a play. This is going to be a read option pass. Not a run pass option, but a read uh, read option pass. Um, this is such a hard play to stop. And technically, I guess Darren Lee is probably responsible for this guy. I, I didn't really look into the coverage. Um, we can actually just check the coverage out really quickly. Um <clears throat> It does look like it's a cover one man-to-man -man defense, which means, um, I'll be honest, I think number 56, whoever this is, is responsible for Darren Fells, and then I think Darren Lee is responsible for the running back. Either way, you know, two linebackers, you can switch this, however you want to say it, uh, but everyone else is playing man, right? You see man here, man here, man here, and you got one safety deep. Um, so you can say that's Darren Fells' guy. You can say that's the other linebacker's responsibility. But the other linebacker is blocked. And, and here's the thing with stopping these type of plays. You, as for Darren Lee specifically, if, if he's reading this play, like, look at your read right now. Like, you have this linebacker, or this, uh, sorry, this left tackle, Laramie Tunsil, great left tackle, blocking down and getting to the next level, getting to number 56. Um, and basically... Deshaun Watson keeps the ball because Frank Clark goes towards the uh, running back. And then at the same time, now you have Darren Fells coming across. And if Deshaun Watson feels he's open, he can hit him coming across. And that's exactly what he does. But that's such a hard play to stop because number 56, the guy that's responsible for Darren Lee's, he's pointing to Lee to go get that guy. But, you know, Lee's he's in the middle of a play. You know, that's such a hard thing. This is something you do before the play. Um, but number 56 essentially gets blocked. Like, how is that not like a pass interference type of play? And I understand it's obviously not, but he gets blocked and like, that's tough, man. That's such a tough play to defend and to stop. But either way, it's a gain of 15 yards. Um, at least Lee chases it down, right? And he, he makes the tackle, dude. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good play chasing it down, a gain of 15 yards. Oh, you know, the best case scenario is, is you stop it before it happens, but... You know, you, you have to pick and choose, right? Let's jump forward into the next play. All right, you guys. Uh, so the Chiefs switch back to the 4-3 front. You're going to see Darren Lee right here. Uh, he's going to uh, eventually come back and he'll he'll, he'll play the stack position. Uh, notice how he, he, he has his run gap, right? I mean, every defense has their run fits. Um, as you guys see, Clark has the outside like way way outside lee's gonna have the inside slash outside right here uh, which is still technically the outside uh, but it's just the inside of like one of these guys um but notice how deshaun watson hands it off and then watch lee get separation from this tackle he gets his hands and then boom he separates right he makes sure that he has his outside shoulder free his outside arm free in case he needs to go make a, a tackle or, or whatever it may be at the same time, the tackle makes his block, right? He just needs to get to the out inside of Lee. Uh, either way, this is good from Lee's perspective. He does his job, and basically everyone else kind of cleans it up. It's a gain of just a couple of yards. Um, great play by Lee. Again, we want to look at every single situation that Lee is put into because, you know, we, we need to know what he's going to do for Gus Bradley. That's what I want to look at. So let's jump forward into the next play. Uh, here's the next play you're gonna see Darren Lee is lined up I believe this is him down here it might not be no it isn't let me go ahead and forward it so there's 50 right there three four he's playing that inside um and that's a great play by Darren Lee and again you know this isn't I'm not saying he's a superstar right don't say you know don't think I'm saying he's a superstar but he does shed the block and you have you know this is the thing that sticks out for me personally of Lee is He's good when it comes to, to shedding blocks. You see him take on fifty or take on that that guard or, or center, whatever that guy is, and then look at how he sheds the block. Now that guy kind of gets hit by that defensive lineman, but he sheds the block and then boom, he gets in there and makes a tackle. That, that's a pretty nice play. Um, again, the two things I notice from Lee is he reads plays well. 
he can get to the to point of attack wherever he needs to and he sheds blocks well those are the two things that i will say we is good at uh, he's okay in coverage as well um but let's jump forward you have the three four front as well uh you got the two guys standing up three linemen two linebackers again lee's on the inside position and here's another play you're gonna see lee shed the block well look at that boom uses his hands throws that that guard and just helps make the tackle man this is a gain of what three yards that's a good play and, and this is all you need from your inside linebackers right you need guys who can defend the run who can get off of blocks like how many times do you see Corey littleton not being able to get off a block right and again that's not Corey littleton's game Corey littleton is a pass covering linebacker uh, i think lee's a thumper and i think that's going to be his best fit for the raiders are right, you guys going into the next drive uh lee was out for i would say like the last seven or eight plays um well, the thing i noticed is when the chiefs go from having three linebackers on the field to two when they put their nickel defense in lee is the guy that comes out uh, which makes sense right the chiefs have two other linebackers that they felt more comfortable with uh, guys that knew the system a little bit better um, this is a pretty nice play by lee but i will say there's one thing he's gonna do in this play is he's gonna miss the tackle uh, he, he reads it pretty well he he sprints out there but he misses the tackle right there and that is the difference of it being uh, think about this right this is second and 10 as you guys will see right there you guys see the sticks second down second and 10 uh, watch where lee makes contact if lee pushes his guy out of bounds right here or even if the guy gets a couple more yards and it's right here at the 35 you're looking at third and four and that's how you win football games, right? If you're at the 35-yard line, it's third and four. You're in a situational... You're playing situational football. You, 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 at this point, need to just make one more stop. And basically, you guys are off the field as a defense. And that's where the Raiders struggled last year, was situational football. Now, everybody misses tackles. Everybody over-pursues players. Lee is not a superstar player. And honestly, that's the difference between him and Deion Jones, right? that was Deion Jones Deion Jones is going to make that tackle Deion Jones is not going to let Atkins pick up an extra five yards uh, Deion Jones is going to stop Atkins right then and there obviously Lee is not Deion Jones right Deion Jones is the top four or five linebacker Lee is not uh, I saw plays where it was Deion Jones versus Josh Jacobs and Deion Jones uh, of the Falcons was stopping Josh Jacobs one-on-one -on -one. Uh, Lee has to make this tackle and if he can't make these tackles for the Raiders he won't play at all now, again, I'm not saying he's going to be a starter, right? The, at the whole time that I've been talking about Lee, I'm looking at him as a depth player, right? Kwiatkowski gets a stinger. He has to come out for five plays. Hopefully, Lee can step in and, and make those plays. At the same time, if Kwiatkowski can't play in a game, maybe Lee steps in for one game, right? I don't expect Darren Lee to be the Raiders' future, right? I think Kwiatkowski's that guy. Kwiatkowski's still a young player. I think Kwiatkowski's good enough. Um, but let's jump forward into the next play are right, you guys jumping into this next play you're gonna see darren lee lined up as an inside linebacker uh, this is a 3-4 but it is the nickel packaged 3-4 uh, darren lee does a good job he's gonna step up fill his gap he's gonna get down blocked uh, you know this play right here this is the difference between a good defense and the raiders right like flat out and the chiefs had a they had the 13th best defense in 2019 uh, even in 2020, their defense was the seventh ranked defense in points per game. And you don't think about that because the Chiefs offense is so high powered. Um, but you look at this play right here from the offensive perspective, every single guy is going to just block down. Uh, receivers block down. This guy blocks down. Everybody blocks down. And what happens when you're blocking down is basically you're trying to get the running back to, to hit one of these holes. But ultimately, when you're blocking down and the holes don't fill up because the defense is filling those, those holes, right? You see Frank Clark started off. Like Frank Clark, think about this. At this point, well, he could just go right up field and probably blow this play up, but he doesn't. He sees the block coming. He's going to take that block on. Right? He's going to run at 87, get down, and he's going to hit 87 because that stops the running back from being able to come to the inside. There's no lane. So the running back now has to cut this to the outside just a little bit. And now Darren Lee comes up and he's going to fill his gap, right? Darren Lee's going to step in here and shut this down. Um, and then what the offense does is they're blocking down. So here comes this tight end. He's going to block Darren Lee. 
but Darren Lee is essentially in the hole. So now the running back's gonna have to cut it even further outwards. So I'll let you guys watch that. Um, there's the block down, there's Darren Lee. And then when this guy blocks down, then the next guy steps up and he's gonna fill the next lane. And then the receiver is gonna come and block down on him, which means now the running back has to cut it even further outside. And the last line of defense, when every single player on a good defense fills their gap, the final guy is the safety. The safety or corner now has to come up and make the tackle. And this is the difference of a gain of two yards, as you're gonna see on this play, and a gain of a touchdown or seven, eight, nine yards. When everybody fills their gaps and the corner comes up and fills his gap and then makes the tackle, this is what you get. You get a gain of two yards and you get a defense that's gonna win you a Super Bowl. Literally, this is what the Raiders lack. They don't have guys that fill gaps. They don't have guys that can tackle. Uh, at least they didn't in the past two years. I do think going into the 2021 season, the Raiders got some guys. Trayvon Mary can tackle, Jonathan Abram can tackle, Carl Joseph, Gillespie. You got guys that will fill gaps and fill their lanes. And um, that's what we need, man. That's 100% what we need. From the backside, it's a little bit easier to see how Darren Lee steps up. Uh, fills his gap right gets through the traffic he obviously gets blocked by 88 32 gets blocked by number 10 and then the corner comes up and makes a play and i spent way too long on this play but uh, it's nice to see good defenses and i i hope the raiders can do this this year man because i've been really disappointed watching the film of the raiders and them consistently just sucking on defense right and a lot of it is, is they're just not in their gaps they're just not in their containments they're just not good when it comes to situational football one of the things Darren Lee does on this play is him and I think that's Tyron Matthew are going to double team DeAndre Hopkins, who I'm not sure what he's pointing at. Maybe he already sees that he's about to get bracketed. Uh, either way, this is, you know, this is what you want from, from good linebackers. You want them to be able to read and understand that, hey, this might be the option. This might be the guy that they're going to try to hit. So let me, you know, even if it's zone coverage and I'm, I'm covering the hooks as he is here, let me get close enough to this wide receiver. Let me put my eyes on the wide receiver to know where the wide receiver is, right? If he just looks at the quarterback and it just backpedals a little bit, he doesn't know where this receiver is going to stop. He doesn't know what this receiver is going to do. Um, he does a good job just kind of sticking underneath Hopkins and making sure Hopkins doesn't, doesn't get that. And again, I would rather have the running back check this off to Duke Johnson than have him throw to DeAndre Hopkins, right? Because the check down means someone else does make the tackle. Um, obviously, you know, I think Darren Lee does a pretty good job on this play. Um, and this is what he's going to do for the Raiders, man. He's not elite. He's not great, but he's a good football player. And that's what the Raiders need. We need good football players. All right, guys, jumping into this next play, Darren Lee. This is first from 10. He does a pretty good job. All right. He, he makes the play on this player. He's one of the guys that helps with this tackle. Uh, this is still a game like seven, eight yards, but he makes his read right from being the backside guy i mean he gets out there uh realistically you get a missed tackle uh, by this linebacker this should have been a gain of two yards right you can't miss that tackle as a linebacker and allow the running back to, to pick up an extra five yards but lee from the backside does a pretty good job pursuing the running back and then obviously helping clean it up it's always nice when you have a linebacker that can blitz and and be physical lay someone out man lay someone out <laughs> you can always i always uh dig that man i always love these physical guys that aren't scared of contact and yeah man he puts this guy down uh, a pretty nice throw by deshaun watson as well um hits hits will fuller right in the hands and he kind of just drops it but what can you do man what can you do again uh on that last play i mentioned leaving physical shedding blocks getting off blocks Here's another example of that, man. He puts it right into 63, right into his chest. I don't know if 63 slips, if he falls, but I mean, Lee still pushes him back. You know, he used to fall. You still have to be pushed back. Um, that's a pretty nice play right there by Lee. He does a good job with his hands. And I, I think that's probably why he was a higher, highly ranked player, right? He, he understands how to win with his hands. And that's such a big part of playing the game of football. Um, let's go ahead and just look at this last play you know i guess i should just wrap this video up uh, darren lee i think is right there you guys can kind of just watch what he does uh, but i hope you guys enjoyed this video man you know darren lee in my opinion he shows some good things on film like even on that play right there you guys can see that he, he clearly 
knows how to win, right? Like, he gets off of blocks well. Like, this tackle right here, um, that's a $25 million offensive tackle. And he has to he has to drop on, on, on Lee, right? Like, he has... Lee is on the inside of this guy. And he somehow still slips by him. And again, he doesn't make the play. That's fine. But the fact that he's still able to slip, use his hands, get off blocks. He does some things well. Uh, I am excited to kind of see how Lee does in camp. Hopefully, he makes the team. Obviously, you know, that'll be up to him to outperform guys like White, Diablo, Muse, Richardson, uh, Morrow, right? Nicholas Morrow is on a one-year deal. He's not guaranteed a roster spot. He still has to work. Like, I know people want Morrow on this roster because he had a great year last year, but you got to keep in mind, Morrow was playing for a contract. And I do think he'll be doing that this year as well. Um, but the Raiders are better this year and, and our scheme is different, right? Paul Gunther's scheme was trash. Gus Bradley is going to actually have a real scheme. He's going to have an, a real roster, real competent team. And that wasn't Paul Gunther. Uh, and I think Darren Lee kind of brings some good things to the Raiders. Now, obviously we'll see, and this is a nice play again. You're going to see him lock out uh, with 63. Boom. Look at that. That right there, man. This is a true thumper man look at that boom gets off of him and and they, you know if you guys are in high school if you guys are in middle school whatever you guys may be this is why you bench press right right here you get into that and boom you block out and that's great man but you got to get off that block and make the tackle uh right there and it's okay it's only a gain of two yards but that's a great play by lee man let's i i, I like it man I, I like where lee's at i think he has a ton of potential I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't make the roster, uh, but I will say I would hope he makes the roster. Um, he's a good player. He, he does some good things on film. Um, but yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys all have a great Saturday. I am doing a meal bag tomorrow. So if you guys have some questions, man, uh, let me know. Le leave those questions in the comment below here and just write that, you know, this is for the meal bag, um, which I will do tomorrow. I will do a full, I mean, it'll probably be like 30-ish minutes long. I'll just be talking. But yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time with another video.